Grand-rising. My friends, welcome back. Since the last time we've had a, a bit of a lot, over 100 subscribers now. Wow, the most beautiful 108 subscribers in the known, several known universes. Most people don't even watch these, but that's fine. But if you do, thank you. And um, I mean, at some point we're, we're probably doing things. I mean, I guess as we go along, like giveaways and such and all that and like and subscribe. But I don't know. I, just, I don't know. Anyway, if you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Join us today as we're going to discuss the morning show where we go over um, a little bit of the crypto market, stock market and just some. Some news items, something to get you to, to listen to while you get prepared a bit, right? Looking here at Bitcoin is up to 51,000. Hey, nice rise over the past 24 hours. It dipped down, I think, less than 50, but now it's back over 51. Ethereum at $4,074. Binance Coin, 566. Solana, $198.99. Cardano. 154 XRP at 93 Terra 93 look Terra moved up to the top 10 since we last spoke polka dot 31 avalanche 116 boys been some moves been some moves doge at 18 hey, it's been hovering at 18 cents 19, 18 um, almost 19 cents for the longest time now uh Shiba Inu at three zeros three eight seven five Stock market, you can see today we um, Apple is close to a, um, 180. Is has, has had some pretty good news. One of our stories is going to be about Apple today. Any other moves? Oh, Nvidia has moved up 12 percent. No, I'm sorry, 12.4 percent today. And Tesla's up 3% today. Okay, let's go. We have the stock markets in the green. You have the S&P up um, 1%. The Dow up 0.69%. And the NASDAQ up 1.7%. Uh, I gotta go more to the Russell because they now start throwing the Russell in with everything. I gotta figure out why the Russell is considered the fourth now. Ethereum is burning for those who haven't watched this or haven't seen Ethereum uh, within probably for about three months now, four months, has a mechanism which causes for it to, um, some of it to be, um, I'm breaking down simple for everybody. Some of it, because my boy tell me that I sound like I'm speaking different la a different language, the way I try to think, like how most people, you know, should get there. But hey, they're getting rid of it. Some of it getting burned, it get, it get tossed, it gets sent away. No, no one uses it again. And that amount here is over now one point, almost almost one point three million, which is close to five billion dollars. So this makes, of course, the supply down, which makes then the amount left more valuable for everybody else. All right. Now, if you haven't been here before. I, don't, I think I've been pretty positive about all the stuff in number one. But we hear about that positivity and positivity being that there's someone in your life who has motivated you to be a better person. Look within yourself. Write something nice about them down in the comment section and then forward them this video and say, hey, take a look at this. What I've tried to put into uh, for eternity, my respect and admiration for you. And then they'll look at it and say, oh, I understand. And then they'll do the same. And we play it forward as such. With that, we jump into. Now, look. I used to. I ain't going to say used to. Lizzie here. You know, Trump has a nickname for it. That's unfortunate. <laughs> you know, I, and I think in a bit in a bit insensitive. Um, but Elizabeth Warren, come on. Now she just. All right. Elizabeth Warren, DeFi is one of the shadiest parts of crypto. Senator Warren wants more regulation for crypto. She hates crypto. I, I know she's on the finance committee, if I'm not mistaken. She's on the banking, housing, and urban affairs committee. And I wonder, we need to take, I hate to say it, but we may need to see who, who's putting money in Elizabeth pockets. Now, I used to think Elizabeth was on the up and up. And she seemed like somebody back in the day who would understand the need for cryptocurrency. But no, 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 no. She wants to 
keep the American dollar in control, even if it's to the detriment of the working class individual or the middle class individual or even the individual high wealth who just don't, doesn't want their money misused and taken and abused for other people's purposes. You know, Massachusetts Democrat Senator Elizabeth Warren has again stepped into the limelight for her comments about the fast growing sector of decentralized finance, DeFi and the role of stable coins in this niche. So, you know, she she. Describes stable coins as the lifeblood of the DeFi ecosystem. And, and, and look, so she understands where, look, people don't want to uh, sit there and gamble with this money. So they want to have a means where, you know, as we explained before, you, you're able to be the bank. I can decide to provide my money to a place where I think is going to be used in a way that's going to be beneficial to me and and be paid uh, my fair uh, share for doing that, as opposed to. You know, the current system that's set up that Elizabeth is trying to protect. Stable coins are cryptocurrencies. I'm not going to go too deep into all this. Uh, to be, I mean, when I say too deep is uh, too, you know, to sit here and go on rants every five seconds about this. Stable coins are cryptocurrencies that are claimed to be pegged one to one to fiat currencies like the U.S. dollar. Meaning that unlike Bitcoin or many other cryptocurrencies in the market, their prices are supposed to remain steady. And they do. And even um, who was it? Uh, Sherrod Brown talking about magic money, probably talking about MIM, magic Internet money, which is a stable coin created that can able jump between chains. And so, you know, it has a. Look, it's all about the memes, kid. And so magic Internet money, because it's like magic, son. <laughs> I'll call you son because you shine like one. Look, get a shout out to the woo. So Senator Warren's latest comments on DeFi and stable coins are just the latest episode, in her ongoing criticism of the larger crypto industry. So she is just trying to, you know. Control her power, you know, at the end of the day. And do you fault an individual for that? Hmm? I, I, I tend to say don't abuse your power. You know, you want to make sure you keep an eye on what it is you gain. Sometimes you have to gain power to help others. You know, That's, it, you know, um, at the end of the day, you look at Gandhi or or Martin uh, or Malcolm, you know, they were powerful individuals. Sojourner Truth, uh, Susan B. Anthony. Any of these individuals, I mean, look, go across to, you know, I'm trying to think of people, you know, Mother Teresa, individuals who who, who are, are 100 percent known for their positive impact. It's power in that, you know, and, and, and to wield that, you have to be mindful of that. You know, people are going to you're going to have influence, be able to do things. And so I, 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 I guess I'm more of the mindset that. Be mindful of that and also stay true to what got you there, which is what I thought was from Elizabeth was looking out for the individual uh, consumer. But, you know, maybe get there, they buy everybody out or, you know, maybe she got some skeletons that they get at, you know, to get that talk that, you know, whoever the new updated version of, of, of the of the Jeffrey Epstein is to come have that talk with you. <laughs> Who knows? The biggest risk for Bitcoin, how quantum computers could hurt BTC. So it's just this company, uh, CoinShares, just uh, talked about with uh, the dawn of quantum computers, how that may impact blockchain technology, Bitcoin in particular. Theoretically, several scenarios that could allow a quantum bad actor. And this goes to a lot of specific vulnerabilities, um, talking about the, the, the fact of how it's set up now with the, with the Shaw 256 algorithm would make it uncrackable, even if the current technology we have now is to advance for the next several um, centuries, it would still not be able to, to break that with the current technology. But quantum computers say it can go after users via the transaction model. Um, so. And that happened a lot in early Bitcoin's uh, development, but it's been too difficult since the network has gotten stronger. But a quantum computer can be able to learn your public key and then be able to spoof it to be able where you try to send money out. It'll go to their accounts. Um, but you can't do that now with, with current technology. But they said that legacy computers and, and somebody and they said it the best that. All the financial markets will be in danger if this happens, not just uh, blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies or anything like that. Digital currencies, all 
uh, all information nation. What, what you think is going to be the most important information first for put that down in the comment sections. Maybe I'll say that. Put that down. What do you what information you think would be the most important information for somebody who builds the first quantum computer that can break into any computer in the world? What you think they go go after first? You know, I think nation secrets, but you know what nation secrets is a, you know, you can imagine ours. It depends who do it first, right? <laughs> I imagine whoever, if it's one person, he probably will look at his own country first. Like, what does they got on me? <laughs> but you know, who knows? But anyway, so that it just talks about that, but it also talks about how the developers who are still working on Bitcoin network, you know, there's a lot of people still developing Taproot just came out. We talked about are working on qu quantum resistant wallets and also on how to scale up um, Bitcoin to to uh, the quantum uh, computing when it when it's time. You know, I read about that some time back about a year or two ago. So I already know very smart people are thinking about it. Apple's computerized glasses will be as powerful as a Mac and launch next year, says a top analyst. And this person is Ming Ching Ko. Ming Ching Ming Chi Ming Chi Ko. Ming Ching Ko. 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 Maybe but none of this is financial advice, anything I say, nothing is medical advice, nothing is spiritual advice, relationship advice, advice about the nature of quantum quarks. I garble words wrong a lot. Look up stuff for yourself, except for very you know specific medical advice that you probably should listen to people who are smarter than you who says to take proper precautions to keep yourself and your family safe at all times. You know, if I get on the rise, say don't stick your arms out. I don't test that theory. I don't. You know, some people do. Hey, some people lose their arms. Some people do it and survive, and they feel like they're uh, thrilled through that. Me, I take that as oh okay, that probably potentially get my arm ripped off. Mm, not worth that for, for me presently. There's other things that get majalis. <laughs> uh, get my arm ripped off is not majalis. Apple has these computerized glasses that will use the version Apple's new M1 processors, and supposedly you will not need a phone. And. It will be able to release what we talked about before of augmented reality, a layer, digital layer of the world. So you walk around, you see people. If you play video games, this it, it, it's a no brainer for you. But if you haven't, it may be hard for you to visualize that everybody and everything you see that the computer can scan and match and, and can change what it looks like. The environment, you know, be able to flip their clothes. You know, it'll get to the point where you can have probably on there an app that says everybody I see make them look naked and it would be a digital representation, almost photorealistic of what it would expect. The artificial intelligence of their their shape over their clothes, what they would look like without. Sorry, it's going to come. You know, if you're smart enough, make it now, you'll be paid. <laughs> um, and I. I Maybe I'm I'm claiming part of that. Do I want part of that? It's going to be so much money I would, but at the same time, do I want to be associated with that? I don't know. Do it in a shell company? You have to give me some, but you have to discuss it only in, in person and through shell companies. <laughs> anyway, so Apple is coming out. This is it. This is what we talk about, the metaverse and everything. You know, I was just thinking, imagine putting your glasses on and then half the screen go and then you're seeing that's your apps and you're able to look and say, oh, okay. No, hit that, you know, able to, there's going to be an interface where you're able to kind of think about not being able to have to hold your phone in your hand, but still having all the access to everything else. Wouldn't that be better? Wouldn't that be better for a lot of us? And if it's, you know, I have an Oculus, uh, got it last February back when, and when I saw in January, what was going to come with the current, you know, pandemic type situation, you know, saw then when I got the Oc. The future of what that was going to be. Um, and so already been knowing this, this is where it was going. So long as they, when they can get to a point where they have something easy for everyone to use, just like how our phones we carry with us. Now, you told everybody would be carrying a, you know, you told parents 30 years ago that their children would have a thousand dollar device that they would give them to carry around with them in their pocket that could break. They'd be terrified. I know, you know, we got boxes and cases and stuff that protect them, but, you know. It's the concept. So 
It's the nature of the beast. And this is what's coming next. And Apple has these glasses that are going to be awesome. Let's hurry up because I do not want to keep these long anymore. So computerized glasses will be a powerful as Mac computers launch at the end of 2022. So this person has a, a, a good track record because they, oh, he, I'm sorry, he does his research through their uh, supply chain, keeping an eye on Apple supply chain. So he is seeing that they have these glasses going to be ready. Said to we'll position the glasses as an iPhone accessory, not a replacement for the iPhone that will play well in the strategy of selling wearable uh, accessories like AirPods. Okay, I thought they said it was not going to. Use an iPhone. Is that that? Is that this one or somewhere else? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right, 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 right. Uh, said the huge processing power will help the glasses stand out from the competitors since they'll perform intensive tasks without a connection to a smartphone or computer. Previous reports said the glasses would need a connection to an iPhone in order to work. But now they're saying they will position them as an iPhone accessory so you can probably use it to pair, boot, run, blah, 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 down there, blah, blah. Not a replacement for it. Oh, S&P closed at a record down as 350 points as investors look for Santa Rally. That would play well into Apple's strategy of selling wearable accessories like AirPods and Apple Watches. Okay. Apple Glass are said to make use of augmented reality, which is the technology that overlays digital images on top of the real world. The company has supported augmented reality on its iPhone for several years, but Computer Eye Glass has the potential to open up even more uses for the technology. So... That is going to be so look look if you not if you you know I try to think and explain this to somebody in a way where it's like it's not so much you well okay i i I'm not gonna keep you going is what I used to explain to my people I used to help and train, which is it's not necessarily what you believe is what people with a bunch of money believe that can really influence your life. Speaking of influence your life, artificial intelligence is learning to manipulate us and we don't know exactly how. So in other words, it just talks about we're going to go through this super quick. Feel free to go look this up for yourself and, um, you know, read more about it. Always read more about it. Learn for yourself. Don't just listen to the words I use. But it talks about that all this data they're gathering from these computers and feed into artificial intelligence that humans been lying to each other for years. And we can kind of guess why humans lie, you know, it's usually for one of their needs or a perceived need. But what's happening with artificial intelligence is we're not understanding how they're learning to lie so well and what they're doing to trick us. We know that, you know, for example, AI quickly figured out by collecting and analyzing immense amounts of data that social media is far more engaging when it plays on negative emotion and that people react more and engage with negative content. And so. It says they really don't understand and it comes down that they're not trying to be evil It's just that is what gets reinforced so what does that say about us look we can get too deep into philosophicals with this but it said no one at facebook went out and said yeah we want to cause a genocide in myanmar or we want to influence the elections on a massive scale that was not the intent you know the intent was to sell you stuff and to sell you stuff is to get you to click on and get you to click on and get you angry and they, and they figured out what will get you the most <laughs> the, 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 the the most angry and that was that. So they said the things we need to know about Australia, they said it was looking at creating an ethical framework for AI and government industry. But things you need to think about. And these are five things we'll leave with this. Who owns it or is the interesting party behind the artificial intelligence? What are its objectives? For example, is it trying to sell you something or convince you they should take your medicine? What tactics is it using to reach these objectives? Those objectives. Apologize. What data does it have available? There's only four questions. What data does it have available? And they said, then for that, sadly, the answer to many of those questions are for most of us still a black box. So they said a lot of this, we don't know how it's making these decisions, but it's working. The tricky part, the AI is still some ways a bit of a black box. It's not an explicit machine that says two plus two equals four. It's a machine that you show a bunch of data to and it analyzes that data for patterns or classifications or insight that it can glean from it. And we don't know exactly how it's doing that. So 
be aware, pay attention, don't allow yourself to be manipulated by other humans or artificial intelligence. Give your love to the most high and you will be fine. With that, I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.